Welcome back to Chem 101. In the last video, we looked at quantum numbers. How to determine what their values are. Given values of n, how do we find out the value of l? Given l, how do we find ml? So if you don't know that, take a look at the previous video. We're going to talk about subshells now, because the values of these quantum numbers end up determining the subshells that electrons fill in. And this is important information for when you are required to write electron configurations, which is the topic of the next video. So let's figure out all the different values of these quantum numbers uh, for given values of n. And remember, each of these n's corresponds to a row of the periodic table. So hydrogen and helium have electrons in the principal quantum energy level of n equals 1. Their L values, if you remember from the last video then, are 0. When L is 0, ML is 0, and this gives us an S subshell, because the, the value of L tells us our subshell. ML tells us how many of these we have, and we only have, well, in this case, we have 1. And remember, the values of L equals 0 and ML 0 still count as a subshell. Okay, so we get 1, and maybe I'll put that in parentheses. All right, so now N equals 2, so L can be 0 or 1. ML can be minus 1, 0, or 1. And so we get an S and a P. And there's one S, but there's three of these P shells, right? Whenever L is one, we get these three values. Uh, for P, whenever L is zero, we also get a zero for ML. That's the S. Okay, N equals three. We get um, zero, one, and two. Well, zero, zero gives us S, one, minus one, zero, plus one, gives us P, and there's three of those. And then two gives us minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two, of which we call that a D shell. And there are five of them. So this is already telling us, if we just to summarize right now, we have a 1S, we have a 2S and a 2P, we have a 3s, a 3p, and a 3d. So this is the subshells. These are the subshells. All right, what comes next? Four, we can have 0, 1, 2, or 3. 0, uh, 0 gives us, oops, space them out too much. 0, 0 gives us s, 1, Minus one, zero, one gives us P. Two, minus two, minus one, zero, two, uh, one, two gives us D. And now we get a new subshell. Minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three. For a total of seven of these F shells. So we get a 4S, 4P, 4D, 4F. Now, there are G um, shells that come with quantum numbers of minus 4. Um, none of the stable elements that you'll probably deal with go that far into the, um, or that high into uh, numbers of N. But, on the other hand, these are going to be very common, and so you should know these orders. Now, there's a neat trick that you can use to figure out the order of the lowest to the highest energy. Uh, I should say that while all of these are degenerate, meaning they're all the same energy level, as soon as we start putting electrons in here, things get complicated. Different orbitals all have different degrees of penetration. What that means is certain electrons in them can get closer to the nucleus than others, depending on the shape of these orbitals. Um, electrons that can't get in that close to the nucleus, they end up being shielded by electrons that are lower than them. And this makes the energy levels get a little wonky. So what you can do is you can draw a straight line 
through all of these sort of corners and if this kept going you could get a little more and, and realize that you would come back up to the top each time and you end up with the order 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 4p, uh, sorry 3p, 4s, 3d. Notice that 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p. So this can come in very helpful and this will be the topic of the next video. Study hard. See you next time.